So let's make some stage elements. First of all, I'm going to show you how you can make a deaf part because that seems like the most common thing you'd have in an obby. First of all, I'm going to insert the part, which I am just going to make, let's say, gray. This is going to be the floor. And then I'm going to make it smooth plastic. But then I'm going to make that this is, let's say, 10 wide and 20 to 30 long. Yeah, that's 30. And this is going to be one element of stage. Now I'm going to make the actual death part. So I'm going to just, let's say, duplicate this. Make this be only too long while it's still being 10 wide. Make this red. And make it neon. And this already looks like a death part. Now actually make it be one. So I'm just going to insert a script into here. Which is just going to simply have the few lines of code. Script dot parent dot patch colon to net function in the brackets open bracket hit after the close bracket drop a line and it's going to insert the end closing bracket for you. Then you're going to say local healer equals to game dot players colon get player from character hits dot parent. Now this is just an assumption that we actually have a player associated to the parent of whatever touched this part because. Let's say, assuming a foot touched this death part, then its parent would be the entire character. So if this was a character, then we should get a player that way. But there's a good chance that that's not the case, so we're going to check if PLR. So if it actually gets a player character like that, then we know, and we can just say PLR.character.breakjoins, and this is going to kill the player. So let's test that out. And now if we go over here and touch this, then we instantly respawn, which is exactly what we want. Next up, I'm going to cover the damage part because that also seems like an interesting part. For this, I'm just going to duplicate this default floor. Then I'm going to duplicate it and just make that have the same dimensions as the, no, as the chill part. Then I'm just going to make it, let's say, gray. And then I'm going to insert a strip. In here, I'm first of all going to have a variable for the damage. So local DMG equals to 10. Then we also want a debounce. So local debounce equals to true. Then we're going to say script dot parents dot touch colon connect open bracket function open bracket close bracket drop a line. And it's going to insert the end closing bracket for us. Then we can say local PLR equals to game that players colon get player from character in the brackets hit dot parent. Then we can check if PLR. Then now we also have to check if debounds. Then PLR dot character dot humanoid dot health minus equals to dmg debounce equals to false weight one debounce equals to true basically what happens here is like with the chill part it gets a player then it checks if the debounce is true so on default it is true so it's going to say yes then it does damage but it actually then sets the debounce to false so that if it triggers again, that's not going to be the case. One second later, it sets it again to true so that it can't take damage again because collisions are detected often hundreds of times a second. So that's why we should need this debounce. Oh yeah, also after the total net function in the open bracket, we're going to say hit so that this is, becomes okay. Now, let's see if this works. So, let's see if we go over to here. Yes, as we can see, we take damage. We don't a stat take damage, and it repeatedly takes damage of us, but in a logical way. And, yeah, that can also kill us. Perfect. Something else also recommend is that we just duplicate these parts in a certain intervals, just so because this can then already be used as a stage itself. There we go. I'm also going to just group this, because this technically already works as a stage, and then I'm going to call it chill part. Now let's close off the scripts. 
If you were to want to make more effective chill parts, all you'd have to do, I'm just going to duplicate this and then here going to do that, is in the script for your chill part, you can just change the damage variable. So I can change that to 25. So the uh, player that touches that to chill in 4 hits instead of 10. And I'm just going to make that, let's say, a darker gray, just to signify that this does more damage. And of course, I can just duplicate that quickly. And group this and call it damage part. Next up, we're going to do the spinning laser part. But before that, I'm going to tell you to subscribe. <laughs> because not only do I, am I still planning to create two more parts to this whole series, but I'm also creating a lot of other content that you're probably also going to enjoy. And considering that YouTube might just suddenly start burying my content, you should probably subscribe to me and turn on notifications so that you'll. Uh, always have that up there in those notifications so that you don't always click if you continue working on this project. So what we are going to do is we are going to press Alt and then select this chill brick. We're going to press Control and C and then we're going to press Control and V and we'll get this separated. Additionally, I'm going to duplicate this regular floor platform once again and then I'm going to position this chill brick center to it. I'm also going to make that this part is, uh, let's say, 20, 30 long to the sides so that it's better. Now I'm going to open the script for this and I'm going to add some stuff. First of all, I'm going to drop two lines right at the top and say local TS equals to game colon get service open bracket open quotation mark Queen service, close in quotation marks, close in bracket. Then after the touched events, so after the end closing bracket, I'm going to drop two more lines. I'm dropping two lines for formatting reasons. And I'm going to say, while wait, empty brackets do. Then I'm going to say local queen equals to ts colon create. Now uh, this shows open bracket, and then I'm going to drop a line, and it's going to have this close bracket. We are currently creating a tween. On, I'm currently going to be recommending you a card which is going to explain to you better how tweens work. Basically, tween service allows you to apply smooth movement to parts because, yes, we could hundreds of times a second move this the smallest increment, but that would limit our speed to how fast we can actually move it. That's why we're using tween service. So we are going to, first of all, in this tween, specify what part we want to tween. So we're just going to say script, but parent. This only works for meshes and base parts. It does not work for models. What this also wants is a tween info. To separate this, we're going to say comma, and then this wants a tween info but new. Additionally, this also separated with a comma wants a table of what happens. So what do we want to have? Well, we want that this part turns. Now in programming terms, Turning something would be to increase its orientation or decrease. The orientation is set in a vector 3 value, so we're going to say orientation equals to vector 3 dot new. We can't use plus equals to, we have to use equals to. The tween service change table of changes is very weird. We can't say parse.property, we have to directly reference the property, correctly spelled and everything. Now, in these brackets, we're going to say 0, because we do not want to turn this on the x-axis. Turning this on the x-axis would be turning it like this. If I'm on the rotate tool, it'll show me three different circles. The red is the x-axis, the blue is the z-axis, and the green is the y-axis. So, if we were to turn the z-axis, that would make it spin in such a way. Now, if you want that, you can just, instead of using here 0, use what we are using for the other axis. Now, also, we're going to have here 0. If you don't have 0, you can have what I'm going to have for the part that I'm actually turning. But because I'm not doing that, I'm just not going to have that. Additionally, comes the z-axis. This would turn it like this, which we do not want. So, the actual one we want 
is the y-axis because that would make this part spin like this. The y-axis is the second property of the vector 3. We want that this turns at around 90 degrees a second, so I'm going to set this to 90. But this would just make that it just sets the property to 90, which once it's done that, it's not going to change anything about it. So we need to make that it adds 90 to the current rotation. So I'm going to say script the parent orientation dot y plus 90. So if it's at 30 at the point, then it's going to set it to 120, which is going to rotate by 90 degrees. So here we have the tween info. I'm going to drop a line after the opening bracket. So that is formatted like this. What this wants is the time. It wants an easing style. It wants an easing direction. It wants the repeat count. It wants if it were reverses, and it also wants the delay. So, first of all, time. How long do we want that between takes? Now, as I've already said, I want that it turns 90 degrees a second. So, we're going to set the time to 1, which is quite natural, because if we're turning it by 90 degrees, then it should take 1 second. Now, just as we're doing with the definition of the tween, we are going to use a comma for setting the next. So, because now we're setting the easing style. The easing style is an enum dot easing style and then dot the easing style we want. Now there is linear, exponential, batch, quad, sign, all of the rest of them. Now we want linear because if we were to let's say take exponential, then it would be turning in a very wonky way. Any other than linear would be wonky. Now as before, we're going to use a comma to separate and we're going to say now enum dot easing direction dot the direction. Now we have in, out, and in, out. Now, I'm pretty sure it does matter. So I'm going to say it in, although it could be that it doesn't have that much effect. Now, of course, we're going to comma and the next property. Repeat count, we do not want that this repeats, so we set it to zero. Now another comma. Does it reverse? No, so false. And I finally did a delay. We do not want that this just abruptly stops and rotates another 90 degrees and abruptly stops on and so forth. So I'm going to say zero as a delay and a comma after it falls. Now currently this does not do anything. So after the definition of the tween we're going to say tween colon play. But now this would stack tweens because it's not waiting for the tween to actually finish. So this is very easy. We're just going to say tween dot completed colon wait. Colon wait just means that it'll stop running in the script until well this part of the script until this transition has been met of it being completed and then it's just going to redefine the tween and play it over again let's see if this actually works so if i play now and oh there we go there is the part spinning now we can oh i think i touched that so, yes oh no this is difficult okay yep yeah, there okay i got over it and of course even when it's turning we can take damage from also, something I've noticed is that it seems as if nothing is accurate. Okay, that's anything. Okay, now we have the spinning chill break. Next up, we have the spinning regular flag. This is very easy. I'm just going to do this and call this more damage part. To do this, we just need yet another platform. You can put it over here and group this one to call it the spinning chill bird or something. And now here we have our platform. Additionally, we're also going to copy and paste the spinning chill bird and position it here. But currently, this does not look like a moving platform. So first of all, I'm going to make that this is 10 studs wide. I'm going to make that this is green and smooth plastic because this looks a lot safer now. Actually, I'm not going to make this 10 wide, instead 6. Okay, there we go. Now, currently, even though it doesn't look like it, as we can see if we play, this has a very obvious problem being that, um, yes, this still acts as a tail bridge. To fix this, all we have to do is we have to go into the script of this part and just remove the touched event. We are going to keep all the rest. 
And now if we play, there we go. And if we touch this part, yes, as we can see, we are completely safe. We can follow, we can stay, try stay on the part, which can be difficult, yeah, but you can just change the speed from one, so that how long it takes that it, instead of it just doing the 90 degrees in one second, that it does that in, let's say, two seconds. Now, if you play, as you can see, it is a lot slower than it was before. This was very easy. So, next up, we're going to do something as well very easy. We're going to, first of all, duplicate this. Then we're going to uh, take the original, group it, and call that um, spinning part. And now all we have to do is that we want that this thing can take us with us. So, at this exact size, um... All we have to do so that it takes us with us is go down to the property, scroll all the way to the bottom, go to Assembly Angular. And there we can take the Y axis and put it to 1.55. For these exact dimensions, 1.55 is the exact amount of rotational force it has to apply so that if you go onto this part, it is going to act as it like it. Oh, no, it looks like I have different dimensions. Because. Technically, this takes the player character with it, but I think my value is too big for these dimensions. That's why it's pushing them off. I mean, this can just be proven if I stop the game and change the property to, let's say, 1.3. Now play again. Now if I walk over there and go onto the part. Oh. Either way, you can just tweak this value until it works exactly for your purposes. Let's see, 1.1 should work. Nope, still too much. I should really stop trying to tweak this, but I'm just going to try it because I really want to fix this. Seems like one is only minimally more. You can, of course, tweak this. Although, I mean, I guess the player could still try to stand on the platform. Okay. So, what do I have next? We have two more pieces next. First of all, based on the same, on the same principle, we have the conveyor belt. We can just duplicate this part and, of course, group these two and call them something like spinning. Something like that. Now, if we select this part, let's just make this clear that this is a trend variable. So I'm just going to make it some sort of purple. And then if we scroll all the way down, similar to that, we have the assembly angular. We also have the assembly linear. The angular makes that your character turns while standing on top of it, where the linear, as you might have guessed, makes that the character is moved while standing on top of it. Now, one now currently, I'd recommend you to enable the viewfinder. If you're you're at the top joint, you need to click on view, and then over here, you should should have view selector. If you toggle this to on, you're going to have this tube over here. It's going to allow you to go into the individual or the graphic views. You can move it around to wherever you need. And this also helps you understand the coordinate system because it shows you in which direction positive axes and which and if they're negative. So let's say we wanted that this part moves us in this direction. Then what direction is that? Now let's look on the viewfinder. This is an the X axis going in this direction, so it's X positive. If X was, if the R line for X was going in the opposite direction, then we'd be trying to get X negative. But this is X positive, so I'm just going to set the assembly linear on X to something like 5. I'm pretty sure the number we're setting here is actually measured in studs per second. So now if I play and walk over there. Now, if I go on top of this, as we can see, this transports us at which appears to be 5 stats per second. Now, you can increase this value to whatever you want. So, the last part I want to teach you how to make is a moving platform. Because that seems interesting. So, what we want is, we want a part. This part is going to be, let's say, uh, blue, whatever. Additionally, we're just going to make this be smooth plastic. 
And let's say something like 10 by 10. Or 10 by 10. Yeah, why not? Now let's position this over here. Now we are going to duplicate this part and move it to a certain position. Now this is going to be the starting point of our platform and this is going to be the position of our ending point of our platform. We can make that this goes to here, whatever. Now we are for a third time going to duplicate this and call this plat. We're going to select this piece over here and call that G2. And then we're going to select a piece over here that isn't plat and we're going to name that P1. We're going to select P1 and P2, and we're going to set the transparency to one. Now we're going to select plat, click on the plus, and click on strip. And now we can strip that this actually does something. So what we're going to do is we're going to get this tween service, so local TS equals to game colon get service in the partition marks tween service. Then we are going to drop two lines, and then get the distance, so local, this equals to in brackets script the parent the parent the p1 dot position base minus base strip the parent the parent the p2 dot position after the close in brackets dot magnitude and there we go this just the distance between these two parts that are currently invisible now we want that this platform moves in between them, so it's kind of interesting to know the distance for that. So now we're going to drop yet another line, and we're going to say while wait in the brackets one, two, or three. The the number he, here the three is how much how long is going to wait before going to the back or to the platform. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to select the let's say spinning chill bridge. We're going to open it and from where it starts with while wait do until end we're going to copy that and we're just going to paste that in here although we are going to remove the while wait at the end and i'm just going to quickly format this okay now what this does is currently it would make that also this part would just rotate which is not what we want so we are going to instead of orientation we're going to say position and we are going to instead of vector sheet new whatever we're going to say script the parent dot parent dot e1 dot position so first of all it's going to go to number one now instead of the one over here in the first variable of the tween info we're going to say this divided by six so that it's for every six studs it's going to take one second for the distance there and all of the rest can stay how it is also i'm going to make that it defines this as tween one instead of whatever else we have now after the tween dot completed colon wait we're going to also say wait three seconds or however long you want that it stays there because currently what it does it it waits three seconds then it goes to the first part then it waits three seconds and then we want that it goes to the second part again and then it will because of this wait another three seconds and this is surprisingly simple all we have to do is just copy over from the tween dot completed colon wait to the definition of the tween after the wait three we are going to drop the lines paste that and just replace the twos the ones to, for twos Oh, I see why, because the second tween goes to part two, part one, and we wanted to go to part two. Now, I'm just going to group that, anchor it. I'm going to call the group, let's say, moving form. Now, if we load once again, I think it's going to take some, yeah, it should just take just three seconds. And any moment now, it should, yes, it's going over to here. Now let's see, it should stop around here, yes, and in three seconds, it goes back to where it came from. Now the nice thing about this system is also that if I was to select P2 and just move that in a completely different position and play again, the system is actually going to also incorporate that 
and made that the part should move up. Yes, it moves up. It just does. It just alternates between the two positions that you can set easily, which is perfect. So in this tutorial, I have showed you how to make a multitude of different hobby elements with that you can directly start actually making stages for your hobby. In the next tutorial, I am probably going to show you how you can, for one, make some sort of a skip stage, probably a select stage from the stages that you already have, and maybe even get to showing you how to make alignment keys in case you want that for your hobby. And I'll hopefully see you in the next video. Bye!